Chapter 5 opens with Esther dressing herself in a royal robe and standing in the inner court of the king's palace to make a request. She finds favor with the king and invites the king and Haman to a feast that she's prepared. At the feast, the king asks what her request is and promises to grant up to half of his kingdom. Esther's request is simple. It's that the king and Haman attend a second feast the following day. Haman leaves the feast puffed up and full of pride to be the only person invited to these royal feasts. And as he leaves for home, he sees Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Mordecai refuses to pay homage to Haman's status and power, which infuriates Haman. At home, Haman begins to boast to his wife and his friends of all of his accomplishments and exploits, bragging that Queen Esther had invited only him to the feast. His pride gets the best of him, and he professes that none of this means anything to him as long as Mordecai continues sitting at the king's gate. His wife and friends hatch a plot and encourage Haman to hang Mordecai. Sure, the king will think this is a fantastic idea. They build a gallows 75 feet tall. In this chapter, verse 2 is your key verse. It says this, And when the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, she won favor in his sight, and he held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the tip of the scepter. You see, it was through God's providence that she found favor with the king. This is not the first time Israel had found favor in an enemy king's eyes. Persian king Cyrus and Artaxerxes released the Israelites to go back to rebuild the temple and gave Ezra and Nehemiah favor to go and rebuild the city walls. And in 1 Kings 19, after fleeing from Jezebel, God told Elijah to stop in Damascus and anoint Hazael king over Syria, an enemy nation to Israel. See, Proverbs 21.1 tells us that the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like the rivers of water. He turns it wherever he wishes. Often we fret about who the world leaders will be and the decisions they make. We can find solace in the fact that regardless of who is placed over the various nations, God is sovereign and in control. He is the one who guides their hearts, putting them in place specifically to use them for his purpose and his plan. As with Esther, Mordecai, and the Israelites, keep the faith and trust that God is always at work in the background even when things don't make sense.